This episode is powered by ActNow Education. Go to www.actnoweducation.com for free comprehensive educational resources and opportunities for active duty, veterans, military spouses, and children. Those critics out there that are judging you, that are talking all this shit, they're not on your path. They're they're talking all this crap because they're sitting comfortable, content in their lives. It's easy for them to look at you and judge something that you're trying to do and you're trying to get better, you're trying to improve it, and it's impossible for them. They'll never be able to do it. They're never they're they're always gonna be too scared to take that leap like you are. Fall in, it's time for formation. Today we're joined with a first generation veteran warrior who served two deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan. As an Army combat engineer, and from my experiences downrange, the engineers were always busy taking care of the IEDs and anything dangerous outside the wire. I'm very fortunate to be joined by an artist who goes by the name Ghost, unlike many others out there who dreamed about their passions and never made that move towards their passions or their goals. Ghost decided to put paint to canvas and made it happen. And today we're going to get to know him and learn about his career transition from the military to the civilian world and how he became an up-and-coming artist. Ghost, thank you for joining us on the Morning Formation Podcast today. Thank you for having me, brother. Thank you so much. As I always say... Happy to be here. (laughs) As I always say, the honor is always on this end of the microphone, man. Thank you so much. I know you're extremely busy, and uh, we'll just get right into it, man. And um, first question I want to ask you is, uh, uh, just to kind of reminisce and go back down memory lane, can you tell me, uh, I know you spent eight years total in the Army, uh, with the two deployments, can you tell me a time, your most memorable time in the military? It could be a funny story. It could be a uh, a story about uh, uh, anything that uh, just sticks out in your mind. My most memorable time in the military. Mm-hmm. Wow. In the uniform. I mean, there's a shitload of them. I mean, I could go through an entire, I could talk about that all day. There's a lot of good times out there, but... um. And most memorable, you mean like good or bad, right? Good or bad. Um, Anything you want to share? Okay. Okay. The mo- the thing that sticks out in my mind the most, I think, number one, out of all the good times and all the all the bad times and out of the long days that I've had, the one thing that really sticks out to me when I go down memory lane, like you said, is um, we were doing – we were downrange. We were in Iraq and we had just, our unit, our brother unit had just taken some casualties. They lost three guys in a, in an IED blast and the entire fob, obviously uh combo blackout the internet goes down. It's silent throughout the fob. Um, and we know something's up. And so That night, our squadron commander said, we're going to salute these gentlemen on their way out. And so the entire squadron, about 6,000 dudes, went out to the helipad, to the tarmac, right, where the Blackhawks were. And it was night. It was about midnight. It was, uh, we were out there for hours. We were standing out there for hours and hours and hours waiting for the, for the caskets to come through the tarmac and onto the helicopters. So we were out there waiting and waiting and smoking, right? You know, like over there, it's, you know, mm-hmm. um, finally it's about midnight and we get into a giant formation, um, and the caskets are coming out of the, uh, coming out of the, um, that improvised ambulance, that, that, that ambulance Humvee, right? Yeah, they're coming out of it, and I remember we are called to attention by our, you know, squadron attention, you know, present arms, right, middle of the night, and it had been so loud with all of us talking and laughing and joking, you know, for hours and hours and hours, and at that moment when they were loading the caskets, you know, when they were passing by the entire formation, they were passing through the center of the entire formation like this, draped in the flag. And us with our arms up, you know, presenting arms, I remember how silent everything was. It was a silent tarmac. It was filled with soldiers, filled with soldiers in a giant formation presenting arms to these fallen brothers being loaded into a helicopter. And the I will never forget that silence. I'll never forget how quiet that was. And it lasted for... 
we had our we had our hands up for a good while for a good half hour or two while they were loading those caskets into those blackhawks took us a while and we did not drop nobody dropped anything for about a good half hour and uh, i remember you know finally uh order arms we dropped and you know that's when they that's when they started turning the choppers on and they started spinning up and we were we were still at attention we were still at attention all the way until the choppers took off so that was another like half right. hour 45 minutes and I, i'll always remember that that's something that a lot of people don't experience man yeah i mean i was talking about that yesterday to someone um you know every time i, I was a platoon leader for a transportation platoon and and the reality of it all uh, of it all is that you know we experience things like what you just talked about and the idea of you know not knowing what was going to happen once you left the wire uh and having that that letter in, inside your inside your kevlar was a real thing and it's something that most people don't have to do man and uh, i was talking to someone about that yesterday um that 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 was that was our reality during that time and i appreciate you sharing that that um circumstance that you had man because a lot of us had to had to deal with some type of memorial we, we had a lot of losses when i was in uh in iraq in 2004 so yeah um yeah it's that's uh, crazy man um you know uh, those types of experiences that you have you know you carry with you when you transition into the civilian world and you take with you you can't ever wipe them clean of your memory and you're always going to have that in the back of your mind and have that experience as well you know at what point ghost uh did you decide to become an artist where did your inspiration come from and and can you tell us like where it all started did it start when you were in the military or was it before that I've been drawing all my life. Um, like I said, I, I was talking about, I was talking about it, um, a little while ago with you and, um, since childhood, since I can remember, I was always coloring, I was doing crayons. It evolved to color pencils. Then it evolved into, um, ink, uh, sketchbooks, charcoal, graph, uh, graphite pencil all throughout my adolescence. And then I joined the army and I just kept on doing it in the army. I kept drawing while I was, uh, while I was uh, in the military too. And it was just a hobby. It wasn't anything I ever took seriously at all. Um, I had my sketchbook with me everywhere I went, deployments, the field, everywhere. I had the, uh, I, I was always doodling because it's to pass the time, right? It was, a, it was a good boredom killer and it was to pass the time. You get a lot of downtime in the field. You get a lot of downtime um, uh, on deployments too, you know, in between missions, you'll get some downtime. And it's just like, okay, cool. I'm just going to doodle real quick. So it was always a boredom killer. It was never anything serious, um, throughout my entire life. It started becoming very serious and I started paying a lot more attention to it after I left the army, after I ETS in, um, after I got back from active duty in 2014, after my second deployment, um, I got, I got back home late 2014, early 2015. So I was on terminal leave um, throughout that time, uh, during terminal leave, you're, that's the honeymoon phase, right? Term, terminal leave is great. You're, you're flying through the clouds, man. It feels amazing. <laughs> you're, you're, you're done. No more, no more formations, no more PT, no more mm -hmm. layouts, no more freaking bullshit PowerPoint briefs, no, no more safety briefs, none of that crap. You're, you're just like, Oh my God, like I'm free. I don't have to deal with it anymore. And then, Oh, then month four comes around month five, month six, month seven. It's kind of like, um, you ever get tired of being on block leave or you ever get tired of being at home for too long and then you get bored and you have to go back to work because yeah. you're going crazy. Okay. Now at around month seven or eight, that's that feeling starts to, to you start to get restless. You're like, okay, well, I've had a nice little break. This is cool and mm -hmm. everything, but I need to get back yeah. to work, right? You're not going to get back to work, bro. You ETS, that's it. It's over. Like, okay, so you need to find a new mission. Well, as as soon as I started, um, as soon as I got back home in 2015, everything kind of just crashed and burned for me, man. Everything fell apart. My life fell apart. Um, I started, uh, man, my alcoholism got out of control. 
um, started uh, affecting my work. It started affecting my relationships. It started affecting my school. I was in, I was taking some classes at the local community college. And so it was starting to take over my entire life and my depression and my, my nightmares and all the shit that had built up. And now I'm sort of dealing with it full time. Mm -hmm. Now it's all taking its toll right now, right when I'm trying to like start a new chapter in my life. Now it's all like, everything's just kind of coming apart. And so I was having a really hard time. I was a mess and, um, pretty, pretty desperate for something new, man. And uh, it was a really dark time for my, for me. And, um, one of the things that I said I'd always wanted to try was painting. I had never tried painting before. I'd always drawn my entire life sketching and doing charcoal, but I said, you know, it's now or never. Like I don't have anything to lose anymore. I don't have any formations I got to go to or any PT tests or any class A inspections or any GI parties that I got to do or any, anything I have to do. So now I have time to actually paint and develop that skill that I've always wanted to try because, um, nothing's working. I'm nothing else is working. I'm drinking myself to sleep. That's not working. I'm, uh, doing a bunch of stupid crap, dangerous stuff to get my adrenaline levels up, mm -hmm. you know, nothing's working. I'm on a self-destructive path. I'm in a black hole and I need to get myself out of here because this sucks. Um, and so, and so, yeah, I just, I decided to, to change that. I made a choice to say, I'm not going to, I can't do this anymore. Um, I don't, I can't go on living like this anymore. This is going to, I'm going to get, kill myself like this. So that's what really, that's what really sparked that whole, um, the whole thing about us becoming an artist and doing the painting full time. It was either this, either you become a really good artist or you just, yeah. I don't know, you crash and burn, you throw your life away. Which one do you want to do? Well, I'll try to be an artist. And so that's what I, that's what I decided to do. <laughs> I can, I can certainly appreciate and understand where you're coming from when you're talking about coming to those, uh, crossroads in life where you're like, all right, I can continue down this path of alcoholism. I can continue down this path of doing the things that are fun and, and easy to do, or I can challenge myself and put myself to work. And I'm sure when you first started painting, uh, I'm sure when you first started painting, it wasn't, it wasn't great. Like it, I'm sure you had to learn how to, <laughs> I'm sure you learned how to, how to, you know, mesh the colors and all this other stuff. And it was probably frustrating at times, right? I, oh man, you, you hit it right on the, on the, I mean, okay. I thought all those skills, uh, you know, I, I could, I could draw really well. I can manipulate stuff in Photoshop fairly decently. I can design t-shirts and whatever. I thought all those skills would transfer over to painting and I was dead wrong. It was like, um, it was like learning how to walk again. It was like crawling and having to learn how to walk all over again. Um, the skills did not transfer and my first, I would say my first, uh, yeah, my first 2,500 paintings, <laughs> um, didn't, didn't look good at all. They, they sucked. They mm. were terrible. Um, but I didn't want to quit and I just wanted to, I don't know, man. It, okay. It was more of a feeling that I got when I painted. Okay. It didn't really matter what the hell it looked right. like. Okay. That doesn't look like a Black Hawk helicopter. It looks like shit, but I felt better. I felt right. better. I, I didn't feel like I wanted to drink myself to sleep that night if I had painted something. Right. Right. If I had just tried to do it, I might've messed up five paintings that day, but since I tried to do something that day and get something out of me and get, get ideas out of my head. Then that night was a little easier. I was like, you know, I don't need to, I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to drink. I don't need, I don't need to get wasted tonight. I'm good tonight. I'm going to try again tomorrow. And so then I would wake up the next day and I said, yeah, it's all right. I'm going to get around to it. I'm going to, I'm going to try it again, you know, and yeah. again and try it again and again and again. And just, it kept going and it grew like that. Things just started to get better for me. Yeah, I want, I want to ask you, man, like, so how do you, how, during that, those, you know, hundreds and hundreds of horrible paintings, how did you tune out the critics? Because people are going to look at it and go, oh, that's horrible. Like, that's, don't, 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 uh, don't lose your day job. Like, how, how, do, you, how do you tune that out? 
I would say it's easy for me, but I know it's hard for a lot of people. It's the biggest obstacle for a lot of people. Like I mentioned, people are so scared of that. People are so scared that, that of rejection and, oh, it's not going to look good. I don't want to show my friends. I'm going to be embarrassed. And judged. Right? Um, I remind people, well, you're the one that's trying. You're the one that's on that path. Right. You're the one that's building that skill right. and trying to get better and better. So you're not failing. If you're learning, Bob Ross said it, Bob Ross said the same thing. He said, if you're learning, you're not failing. So with every single shitty painting that you do, that you trash or you throw in the garbage or you light on fire, whatever, you fucking smash it into pieces, whatever you do to it. If you learned a little bit from that painting, you're incrementally building that skill and it's getting better and better and better every single, you, every single time you try it. So the fact that you're building that technique and you're on that path of enlightenment, um, that's what I always tell people, people to remember those critics out there that are judging you, that are talking all this shit. They're not on your path. Mm -hmm. They're, they're talking all this crap because they're sitting comfortable it, where they are easy. They're content in their lives. It's easy yeah. for them. It's easy for them to look at you and judge something that you're trying to do. And you're trying to get better. You're trying to improve it from the, from where they're sitting. It's easy for them and it's impossible for them. Mm -hmm. That's why they're talking all that crap. Mm -hmm. They'll never be able to do it. They're never, they're, they're always going to be too scared to take that leap like you are. Right. So you're taking that leap and you're, you're going out there and you're trying to get better. So don't worry about what they think. Fuck yeah. that. That's what I say. That's what I always, <laughs> I always tell podcasters that man or content creators, because even with me doing this, when I started this, I, I got that, I got that critic where it was like, oh, well don't, don't quit your day job. It sucks, you know, and that, uh, and I, I think for you, we had a conversation before the recording and, uh, you mentioned that early on in your, in your life, you enjoyed drawing, you enjoyed, um, being an artist and people would tell you, Oh, you can't do that. You need to get, get real. You need to do real things, you know? And, and you had something about you that just said, I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm going to continue doing it. And maybe that has something to do with who you are and how you're able to mute the noise when it comes to the critics today or early on, I, I'm sorry, early on when you started to just say, well, I don't care what you think. I'm going to do it anyways. And I'm going to continue doing it. And it's just how it is. Right. I, I remember when I was a kid, I remember just feeling really awesome that I can manipulate a pencil on a piece of paper and make it look, make it look like something cool. Right. right? It wasn't the best in the world. It wasn't, awesome. It wasn't a masterpiece, but I liked it. I liked it. I said, Oh man, that looks badass. I'm going to keep on, I'm going to keep growing it. I'm going to add to it. Right. I'm just going to keep adding and keep, Oh man, that looks, that looks freaking awesome. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the page in my little mm -hmm. notebook and I'm going to try something else. And it's a, uh, I don't know, man, it's a, it's an endorphin rush, man. It's a dopamine rush in your brain. It's like, oh, that looks badass. That's awesome. It makes me feel good. So I'm just going to keep doing it again and again. So it's like an addiction, man. <laughs> I'm addicted to it. It's, it's an obsession. It's like, fuck, I, I like the feeling that I'm, I'm hooked on mm -hmm. that gratification that I get when I do it. And I've, I've liked it since I was a kid and I love it even more now. And it's even stronger. It's more powerful now. It's, it has a more, it, the effect that it has on me is a lot more powerful than it used to be. Right. You, yeah. Going back to your time in the military, uh, did anyone in your platoon or in your company find out that you were talented and kind of made you every, it seems like every unit has that one guy all, that does all, all the logos does like, are, were you that guy? This guy. I was, was you. I was the one, <laughs> I was the one that was voluntold every single time, mm -hmm. uh, to do the platoon t-shirt or the company logo t-shirt or the squadron logo on some, somewhere, paint it somewhere. I did, I did a T wall in Iraq. I did one T, one T wall and I did three T walls in Kandahar. Damn. I wow. painted them because I was the guy that, uh, I was the artist, the graphic designer. So Yeah. Every every damn time, man. <laughs> There's always that one guy. To too. I wasn't always I wasn't always excited to do it. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, man. God damn it. I just wanted to right. train. I wanted to go to the range, man. Right. I wanted to blow some shit up. I didn't want to I wanted to go on well, mission, man. I didn't want to draw on the damn fob. I didn't want to draw on some T walls at the fob. I wasn't excited about that at that time. Well, it's a, a lot of pressure, right? Now 
it, it is a lot of pressure. And okay, okay, okay. Whew, let me talk about this. I'm gonna get this off of my shoulders too because right now I deal with some kind of I deal with hard clients every now and then. You got to deal with um, some clients that have some pretty impossible kind of ideas that are kind of out there, but you work with them and you make you and you make things happen. You're like, okay, I don't know if I can, eh, I'll, I'll knock it out. Boom. And sometimes you deal with that. That's not a problem. That's, that's everybody. Right, but right. I'll tell you first sergeants and Sergeant majors mm. are the worst fucking clients I've ever had mm. in my life. They're the most difficult, most obnoxious people <laughs> to work with. They are impossible. I agree. Impossible <laughs> to work with, man. Um, because a sergeant major, okay, how long do you think it takes me to paint a mural now? Now that I know what I'm doing, now that I'm good at it, right. how, do you, how, how long do you still think it takes for me to paint a, a mural, like a logo on a wall somewhere? Just give or take. Um, I mean, really, a couple weeks? couple weeks. Okay. Yeah. Now, try telling that to a sergeant major that wants to impress another sergeant major from another unit. Try telling him that it's going to take a couple weeks to do this mural. No. Yeah. They, what do you think he's going to say? They want to know. Uh, C-O-B, who? C-O-B. Uh, <laughs> C-O-B, Roger. Roger, C-O-B. <laughs> okay, so yeah, C-O-B, Sergeant Major. Yeah, totally, totally. And okay, so by the way, can I get a nice stipend, right? Can you give me a stipend for uh, maybe like a ladder, maybe some masking tape, maybe some paintbrushes, maybe some buckets, some tarps, some other materials that I'm definitely going to need to do this? Uh, negative just make it work cool just make it work wow that's frustrating cool all right so i had i'll tell you what i had i had um tan spray paint black spray paint white spray paint of course od green spray paint and red spray paint oh that's it and so i had to i that's what i had to work with <laughs> that's all i had man i, I would had to make it work dude i would say another frustrating part of that too is like working with people that just simply un are are not creative but they're telling you like, all right, this is what I want. Uh, I, I'm not really sure what I want, but this is kind of what I want. And but they're not being very specific about it. And then when you start doing it, it's like, oh no, no, that that's all wrong. Well, that's not what you said. You know, yeah. that would be super mm -hmm. frustrating. And yeah. you know, where aside from the the T walls uh, that you did and the work that you did for some of the uh, upper echelons out there uh, downrange, where else has your art been featured so far? Uh, you're talking about the murals back home the murals or I, I know you did some work with grunt style as well, right? Yeah. The grunt style t-shirts are probably my most, I don't know, I guess uh, it, it has a further reach than any of my other artwork that I've ever done because grunt style is a, is a huge national, uh, apparel brand. Uh, I think they're global too. They've got stores, um, in different, uh, like, yeah different countries right where where we have bases at yeah they'll have they'll have little in the px's and shit like that yeah, yeah. so yeah they're glow they're a global apparel brand um and so my, the fact that i did t-shirt designs for them that is it's a global reach right there for those t-shirts so the grunt style t-shirts you can definitely check those out and then their headquarters building downtown san antonio and then i did one on um by mi tierra mi tierra restaurant is um it's a very iconic it's a very iconic tourist restaurant in San Antonio. And I did a mural for, for their, for the family. That's the, they're the Cortez family. Very influential, um, very, very influential family in uh, San Antonio. And I, I worked with them. They were really cool. They were really nice people, good clients to work for. And I did a mural for them, uh, downtown San Antonio. Um, did so many, I don't know, Dos Sirenos Brewery, back unturned brewery in San Antonio. I did one, on the inside of the brewery and on the outside of the brewery. Mm -hmm. Whew, what else? Anything the in LA or California? No, I haven't gotten out that far yet. Um, LA has its, has its own mural muralist, man. They got their own artists out there. It's a whole other territory. It's like stepping into a, I don't know, man. It's like, what, what is it stepping into? <laughs> yeah, man. It's um, uh, so, I mean, I don't think we have any, any of our own muralists who are combat veterans though. I mean, are are you aware of anyone out here that does this kind of thing? Uh, not combat veterans. Yeah, no. Um, 
There's one other guy that is a combat veteran that does murals, and he's up in Fort Worth. His name is uh, Velasquez. Uh, I talked to him recently. He's a cool dude. Um, I don't know what he did while he was in the Army. I don't know what was M- his MOS, but he's a full-time full-time muralist now in Fort Worth, Texas. He's a, he's a pretty cool dude. Definitely, man. I'm going to have to put your name out around here and see if uh, one of these VFWs or someone else can uh, is looking for any work for that because – as you know, we have a lot of graffiti here in the city, man, and um, it'd be nice to have something that's military related. And um, so, I'll- yeah, um, yeah, totally. Um, I feel like a lot of the well, I'm I'm sort of the only the only one here too. One of the only ones here too. Uh, back in San Antonio, I mean, in San Antonio, there's a there's several muralists that you can choose from. I mean, you thorough rock there, you're right. going to hit a muralist. Okay. In San Antonio, but yeah, you're right. Not, not a lot of them are, um, not a lot of them are veterans. Um, wow. cool people, great people. I learned from them. Right. I learned a lot from the local art community in San Antonio back, back in 2015 when I was uh, learning, when I was still kind of, you know, learning how to paint, really, I submerged myself or I sub, what do you call it? immersed there we go i immersed myself with nothing but artists and so i nitpicked little techniques here and there and i learned from them and um, wow. took a lot of advice from people that already knew what they were doing so i uh, i owe a lot to the um, to the local art community in san antonio for kind of taking me under their wing and teaching me a little bit here and there um as far as military artists or military muralists um i don't know of very many others yeah we need to get your name out there man while we're uh i run this on youtube as well while we're talking here do you mind if i throw up some of your artwork um and just uh kind of <laughs> show, show people Go out ahead. there man i tell you and the reason i say that is because that's what caught my attention man i was just scrolling through instagram and i saw your artwork and i and then i went to your youtube which i'm going to post all these links down in the show notes so if you're listening to this on the podcast or you're watching this on youtube Scroll down to the bottom. You're going to find all the links to do this. But watching you create your work was absolutely amazing to me. And I thought, man, I got to reach out. I don't even know if this guy's going to respond to me, but I got to reach out and I got to see if I can get in contact with Ghost because, uh, for one, you're one of us. You're you're a military veteran, and on number two, your work is extremely, extremely well done, attentive. And it's it was beautiful, man. I was like, I, I got to get a hold of this guy. So I'm gonna post up some uh, some of your work while we're talking here, and um, and uh, try to get your name out there, man. Because I'd love to see some of your work out here in Southern California as well. Um, Ghost, you've talked so much about you know where you came from and and how it all started for you. What advice would you have for folks out there who are afraid or fearful of taking a chance on themselves? Or following their dreams, it sometimes, man. Um, you know, people can can say, "Oh, you know that that's just you know playing the guitar is just that's just a hobby. You know, that, that's just a dream. You got to find a nine to five. You got to find that hourly job." But you know, what if you have a real burning passion inside, and you're just kind of the right there, man? What what advice do you have for those folks? I'm also in a band, so you know, just you play, said play guitar. I also play guitar too, <laughs> and you're talented. i've been playing guitar longer than i've been painting um but anyway that's another conversation uh what advice do i have for them um it's kind of like i was saying earlier you have to get over that big um it's it's a mental obstacle that is stopping you more than anything more than anybody else is stopping you no one is physically restraining you and stopping you from doing these things Mm -hmm. no one is you can you can you can you can choose to listen to people when they doubt you or you can just choose to say oh, i'm just going to do it anyway right because that mental obstacle stops people from doing the things that they want to do more than anyone or more than anything else you're stopping yourself stop stopping yourself quit doing it quit listening to your own negative thoughts okay you need to start with that positive attitude and that positive way of thinking, saying to yourself, you know what, maybe I can do it. If I can try, if I at least try and learn and get better and build it little by little, maybe I can get good at that one thing that I want to do. Okay. It doesn't have to be painting. It doesn't have to be playing guitar. It can be anything you want. It could be jujitsu or woodworking or sculpting or freaking whatever you want to get better at something. You have to start telling yourself that you can do it. 
once you start telling yourself that you can do it and you believe that you can do it, it's a lot easier than you think it is. It really is. Um, I remember, I remember when I started painting and when I was really horrible at it and it was terrible. Um, from the time that I painted like a, my first one, which was really shitty to like my 15th one to my 35th one that was really crappy and I didn't like them. Let's say to the time that I really started liking my artwork, it was about maybe a year, maybe a year and a half, two years until I really started, really started understanding and getting the hang of things. And so when you look at a long enough timeline, like, I don't know, your life, right. two years isn't it's shit. Nothing, right. Right. It's nothing. It passes by like that. And I was done. I was, I, 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 and I, and you can compare it too. You can track it. You can say, fuck, that was the one, that first one that I did two years ago. And look at what I'm doing now. Oh my God. It's because I kept, you, you got to keep going. And it's also consistency. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's number two. One is positive thinking. Get over that obstacle in your head. And two is consistency. And you know who will tell you the same thing is, um, personal trainers, man, Inst like, like yeah. PT instructors, right. they'll tell you the same thing, man. You want, you want, you want to get in shape. You want those abs. You want to be fit. You got to be consistent about it, man. You got to one, you got to diet well. And two, you got to work out every, you got to work out consistently. You can't just expect results like this. Okay. So yeah. that's the other thing people like three, I think number three is you got to be a little patient with yourself. Okay. Right. Don't, don't be that guy or don't be that person that's expecting instant results because it's, it ain't going to happen. All right. Um, instant results are for, I don't know, man, uh, no, they're not. Who, who wants, who really, who really honestly expects instant results with anything? No. I mean, if you look around, I mean, think about it. Nothing, nothing good that happens in your life happened like that instantly. Everything's kind of gradual, right? Right. And that's what you have to really understand about your new skill that you want to take over or the, the new skill, that new thing that you want to take on. You're not going to get good at it in two weeks or six months. It's going to take you a while of consistency, right? Right. Consistency and learning to really get good at, at that one thing that you want to do. So give yourself some time. Be patient with yourself. It's not going to happen right away. So, but it'll happen uh, gradually, incrementally, and, and you'll be happy with the results, um, in a lot sooner than you think. So, you know, in my mind, I thought it was going to take 30 years to, to be, to get to the level that I'm at now. I thought it was going to take, Oh my God, I'm, I can, I can't ever paint like that. I can't ever do it. That's bull crap. Just keep, keep painting every day. I mean, come on, just keep doing it and it'll, it'll happen, man. It'll happen. So one of the, um, one of the metaphors or the analogies that I was using earlier was um, the whole language thing when you're a kid, right? Well, let's think of another metaphor, right? For people to really understand what I'm saying about mm -hmm. an obstacle in your head, that positive mentality. Okay. So imagine that your brain, imagine that your the inside of your brain is a big lot of property, right? Like you've got a big lot of land you got acreage right mm -hmm. and some parts of it around your house and what you know you kind of maintain that right you cut the grass you trim the trees you trim your shrubs and all that stuff you do landscaping around this circle around your house right and that's the stuff that you know and you're familiar with most of the time out there on the rest of your acreage and your property is sort of like unknown regions that you don't really that you right. know it's there but you don't really go there. You don't really venture out there. And the whole drawing thing, everybody, every single person on earth um, took a crayon at one point in their life and started coloring with crayons in a little coloring book and drew something, drew a little star, drew a little sun or a dolphin or something, right? Mm -hmm. When they were a little kid with a crayon at some point. Yes, they did. That part of your land right there, that's that part that's gated off and it's overgrown and you don't really go over there anymore. It's not well kept, right? right. Every, the, the gate is rusty. That fence is rusty. That chain and that lock on that fence is, is all rusted out. 
you used to go over there when you were a kid, but you haven't gone over there in a very, very long time. Now, when you want to when you want to build that skill, you want to do that thing again. You got to go over there. You got to break that rusty ass lock off and that rusty chain off of that fence. Open it up, and you got to go in there. And there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work. You have to cut all that shit down. And you got to clear it all out. Right. And you got to work at it and work at it and re and re rejuvenate it, revamp it up. And so it takes, you can revisit that place in your head and you can really do it, but it takes a lot of work to, to, to get it back to that level that you want it at. You're such a visionary, man. I was, Does that makes sense. Yeah, no, I was sitting here in my own mind, imagining what you were explaining. And I was like, first I was like, hmm, where's he going with it? And then I started and then I started seeing it. Yeah, I totally get it. Like you've got the, the nice square chain link fenced area that you groom and you take care of. But then you've got that area yeah. outside that in, in my mind, as you were talking about it, I could see I could vision actually in my mind what you were talking about, man. And that's actually a very great, very great uh, image that that you painted there. Um, and I think that that's spot on, man, with where a lot of people are. And going back to what you mentioned, man, the, the three things that you need to do to be successful, uh, you know, my old man used to tell me all the time, you know, nothing happens overnight. And it's so funny how such a simple little phrase like that kind of sticks with you uh, when it comes to, you know, accomplishing your own tasks and your own goals, understanding that nothing happens overnight. He used to say a bunch of stuff. He used to say nothing good ever came out of a bar and he would just say these small things and it kind of, these things would stick with me, you know, and, um, Proverbs. <laughs> yeah, man, exactly. And, you know, we can be our own worst enemy at times, our own worst critics. And like you mentioned about time, you know, you mentioned two years, right? And two years is nothing. And I was talking to a young man yesterday, 25 years old. We we're talking about the military. We we're talking about going to basic training boot camp and stuff. And he's like, well, how long is that? And I was like, oh, you know, it's nine weeks for this. And then you got to go to your advanced training or whatever afterwards. Yeah. And that could be a couple months. And he goes, well, I don't know, man. It's, you know, it could be up to a year. And I was like, a year is nothing compared to the rest of your life. And I think that I want to, I want to underline it's a that. Flash, man. Yeah. It's, it really, um, I go back to mine. What my, my whole freaking basic and AIT combined was 16 weeks. Yeah. Hey, it's nothing. Are you kidding me? That 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 pa passes by. That's like that's like a day <laughs> in reference right. to like to how, to how your whole life is going to pass by. Oh yeah. 16 weeks is like nothing. that is like microscopic, man. That's nothing, bro. Oh my god. And so yeah, it's um when you look when I look back at it, I'm like, man, what what the hell? <laughs> One of the things I want to underline as well, before we move on to the next question here that, that I have, and I want to learn about what you got going on over the horizon, was I want to underline decisions. Um, you mentioned earlier that you had decisions when you left the military where you could have gone farther into drinking alcohol and doing some of the things that you probably shouldn't be doing, and you chose to, to um, emerge yourself into art uh, to a point where you, you honed it and everything. And for me, that was Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is also sort of another art. And I was going through some rough times it is. when I got out of the military and uh, I was just working with another guy one day and uh, I had wrestled in high school and I was working with him and we were talking and he was like, man, you know, I really want to get into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And uh, I was like, you know, I do too. And uh, next thing you know, we're like, all right, well let's, let's learn together. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So we both helped each other out, got us into it. And then I ended up training like three, four days a week was going to competitions. Cause I, just like you, I knew that I was at a crossroad where I had to decide like, what am I going to do with my extra time? Yeah. And I, I wanted to do something that was going to be um, beneficial. is going to be a value that I was going to have something to show for. Um, and I chose Brazilian just, I ended up doing it for like 11 years, man. And it was, it was a total passion of mine before the pandemic hit. Um, and I'm just now getting back into it now. So I completely identify with what you're talking about with that. And I wanted to underline that for the listeners out there. Yeah. You know, if you transition out of the military, find that thing that, that, that makes you happy, that makes you fulfilled. Um, instead of, you know, choosing to do, you know, other things that may not, be able to provide you any value at all in the end, like, you know, drinking and, and drugs or anything like that. Um, but, uh, 
So I, I just wanted to underline that ghost because you brought up a very, very good point yeah. earlier. And I wanted to ask you, man, like over the horizon, what, what do you have going on coming up? Coming up? Um, well, like I said, I'm, I'm still working on commission pieces. Um, all the time I get, I get DMS, I get messages over Facebook and social media, um, asking about, you know, how much, how much would this painting be? How much would that mural cost or how much would this logo cost? So I'm still, I'm still doing the art thing. Um, not full time though. It's more of like a side hustle now, but right now over the horizon, the biggest thing that I'm working on is the art show for November. Um, I'm putting together an art show working with grunt style and um it's actually going to be there at their uh, downtown location in san antonio and um i'm pretty much in charge of getting all the artists together compiling all the artists together and building the uh building the exhibition space i'm going to convert their i'm going to convert their first floor into a gallery uh, an art gallery (laughs) so that's what i'm working on in the in the near future it's amazing, man. Absolutely amazing. And uh, like I mentioned before, I'm going to post all your social media platforms in the show notes for this. So folks listening, make sure you scroll down to the bottom and check him out on Instagram. That's where I found him. Instagram is a visual social media platform. So of course, for guys like Ghost here, I mean, it's it's perfect for him. It caught my eye. And then I started doing a little more research into YouTube. And I was like, God, kind of fell in love with his work, man. And uh, I was like, got to get a hold of this guy. And uh, for for people who are looking to connect, besides the show notes um, that I put down there, um, if someone's looking to connect with you, Ghost, or looking to do some work, where can they uh, contact you? Do you have an email address or a website or anything like that? The biggest, the easiest way to contact me is probably through email. Uh, I'm going to get that on all my devices. And the email is probably the easiest thing for me to access. Uh, It's all one word ghost custom art at gmail.com um, reach out to me at any time I don't really have any set hours I don't get offended if people message me at uh, odd hours and stuff like that usually usually that's when people start thinking about their ideas and like they, they message people and uh, right. I get a lot of odd hour uh, odd hour inquiries and I don't mind that at all because I'm either up painting I'm either up designing t-shirts or sketching something else out or practicing on a guitar i'm doing something i'm very um i don't know i'm very uh, the wheels are always spinning up right Uh, but in but in a good way but in in a good way not not in the way that they used to always be spinning uh, in a very positive very productive way now um so uh, i stay busy and so if anybody wants to reach reach out and contact me about doing some work ghost custom art at gmail.com is the easiest way to do it then there's also the the social media platforms as well awesome sounds great man hey uh so ghost before we finish out this episode is there any final pieces of advice or uh, anything that you'd like to tell our listeners out there uh oh man kind of open-ended there's a lot i could say <laughs> right. i mean yeah there's a lot i could say uh <laughs> positive thinking man it really transforms it really transformed my life and it'll transform anybody's life if they if they kind of change their perspective around and change their their outlook and their their attitude around or for the way for the way they want to uh, deal with things life is filled with nothing but obstacles nothing but problems nothing but challenges it's hard man shit shit sucks sometimes you know you you get you get frustrated with things but you can choose to look at it positive or negative. Negative way is the easy way, right? Right. It's easy to be negative. It's easy totally. to be pissed off and just fucking disgruntled all the time with shit. It's so easy to do that, to be that way and just say, ah, fuck it, fuck it all, right? It's hard. It's really hard and difficult to be positive about things. Yeah. Um, but you have to do the right hard thing over the easy wrong thing, okay? Hard right over the easy wrong. That's what my old squad leader used to say. And it stuck with me hard right over the easy wrong positive thinking. Um, look, shitty things happen. You learn from them, you learn from them and you move forward. You learn, you, you get knocked down. Um, you learn, you take it in any positive way that you can. And you learn from that experience and you get up the next day and you move, you charge forward, man. That's it. Positive all the time. 
it'll change everything in your life if you think that way. It's a great piece of advice, man. Um, I, I, I am one of those people who at times have been very negative about things. And even with, it sounds crazy, man, but even with like customer service and like things like Yelp, like I go out of my way to try to provide positive feedback because the world is so full of critics yeah, and people that are negative about things. And, um, you know, when I started changing my own mindset, um, it really changed who, how I felt about myself and, and who I was. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Ghost, I really appreciate that piece of advice to final things out. There are so many th- great things that you talked about here today. And for the listeners out there, I really hope that you're able to to resonate with uh, Ghost's overall experiences, his background in the military, and all the trials and tribulations, the obstacles that, that he's had to come over as well. A lot of us have been through it in our own lives. And uh, Ghost, it's been an absolute honor to have you on the Morning Formation podcast. Thank you so much. It's a great conversation, sir. Thank you very much for having me, man. It was it was awesome. Folks, make sure you go down to the show notes. Check him out. He's got a lot of great, great pieces of art out there. Um, if you're someone in another city looking to get uh, some type of military style of mural done, he's the man to call. Uh, combat veteran, been to Iraq, been to Afghanistan, has been through all the all the tough times, eight years in the Army. Combat engineer, I mean, this this is your man right here. So with that being said, folks, thank you for joining us here on the Morning Formation Podcast. Ghost has been an absolute honor for everyone else out there. I want you to stay tuned, stay focused, and stay motivated. Warriors, fall out. You've been listening to the Morning Formation Podcast. I hope you found today's materials helpful and of value to your current situation. You can connect with me on Instagram at the underscore morning underscore formation underscore podcast or you can connect with me via email at the formation podcaster at gmail.com also i would like to thank my partners at act now education for their support authenticity community and trusted is what you can expect from all members of the act now education team you can link up with them today and learn about some new free educational resources on their Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or at their website, actnoweducation.com. Whether today's show took you back to a nostalgic time or helped you think about tomorrow, thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you again. Stay safe and stay motivated. Warriors, fall out.